Welcome back to NRM 638 Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with Python date-time objects. So go to the Blackboard website in the Scripts folder, Week 2, and download this text file, datetimetopics.txt. That's what we're going to be working with in this session. Okay, so to work with dates or times in Python, we need to import a module called the date time module. So we'll copy and paste the first line from the text file, import that module. And then what we'll do is we'll make a date time object using the date time dot now function. So copy, control C, B for control, control V for paste. So that creates this date time object in Python. And that date time object will have many pro properties such as day properties and time properties. So for example, we could say, let's look at that object. So date time object. And that's what's inside that date time object. So this is the year, the month, the day, the hour, seconds, milliseconds, and total seconds. Okay, so we could ask for a property, the day property from a date time object. So that's the day property. And we could ask for the month property, the so January in the year, so 2015. And when you do this, you'll get slightly different values because you'll be using this dot now, and that will be for whatever day and time when you execute that command. Okay, we could also use the ISO weekday function. And that will return an integer value where 1 represents Monday, 2 represents Tuesday, etc., and 7 represents Sunday. So here I'm working on a Sunday, so I get value 7. And if we say help, we could get help on our date time object. So basically all the functions that are available for the date time object and all the properties of the date time object. Okay, so when we use a date time field in ArcMap tables, when it gets passed to a function, it's automatically turned to a string. So let's make a string variable that would be typical of what you're going to get when you use your field calculator function. So that's our string variable, and this is the text that's in that string variable. So what we want to do is interpret this and convert it into a date time object. So to do that, we're going to use a function strp time, which basically takes a string and converts it to time based on some format. So what we're going to do is take this function, so datetime.strp time, and in here we'll specify the string that needs to be converted, and then what is that format of that string. So here's the string that we're going to convert into a date time object, and here's the format of that string. So percentage %m refers to the month, and then a slash, and then percentage %d refers to the day, and then percentage uppercase %y refers to the year in four digits, and then we have a space, and then percentage sign i, so that's the hour, the minutes, colon, and then the seconds, and then percentage lowercase p refers to a.m. or p.m., and then we'll just execute that. Okay, so how did I know um, percentage m, percentage lowercase p. Well, what I did was in Python, I went to help and then Python documents. And then I looked up date time. And eventually I came up with this table in the documentation. 
So for example, lowercase p is the locales equivalent to either AM or PM. Uppercase M is minute, so that's going to be between 0 to 59. Lowercase M is month, and that's going to vary from 1 to 12, etc. Okay, so we'll use this function in ArcMap. So date info. So what's going to happen is the input will be from a date time field and that will be automatically converted to a string when it's passed to this function. So then basically what we need to do is take that string and convert it to a date time object in Python. So the string is going to be month, day, year, hours, minutes, seconds, and then AM or PM. And then we could extract the properties from our date time object. So we could extract the day, the month, the year, the hour, and the minute, the second. And then if we say ISO weekday, we could extract the weekday number where one is Monday, two is Tuesday, seven is Sunday. And then in this example, I'll return the weekday, but we could also change this return to return the day or return the month or the year or the hour or the minute or the seconds. So I'll just copy this. Okay, so we'll be working with the same table as before. Let's turn off all the fields, and we'll just turn on the field for our date field, and we'll have an integer field. So I'll just turn on integer field 3, just as an example. Okay, so we'll do the field calculation integer field 3, show codebook and Python parser, and then control D to paste. So here's the function that I copied and pasted from that text file. So the name of the function is date info, so control C to copy, and that's going to be equal to the function we're going to call, and then in parentheses we're going to pass the date field to that function. So pass the date field to this function date info, and then that will become a string when the function receives it. And then basically we'll use this date time function to convert that string into a date time object and then extract the properties of that date time object. So the day, the month, the year, the hour, the minutes, the weekday. And in this case, I'll just return the weekday. So remember I'm doing this on a Sunday, so it should return, well actually it's gonna use this date field, so it all depends on what date these are. And then just okay. So here, the 5th of January 2015 was a number one, which is a Monday, and April 4th will be a number six, which is a Saturday. And we could modify this function, so if we go back to our field calculator, rather than returning the weekday, let's return the month. And then just OK it returns the month from this date field. So the first four records are from January and the fifth record is from April. Okay, so in the previous example we were returning integer values. So for example, the year or the month or the day or the hours or the seconds or the weekday. We could also return character. So let's make a date time sh or string and then we'll make a date time object from this string. Okay, so we now have our date time object and we could return some character var or character strings using this date time object. So basically this function is string from time and then this is what we want to return percentage a. So that's going to be a day of the week as a string. And then if we used uppercase percentage b that will return the month of the time as a string. And then uppercase H returns the hour. And that will return the hour in military time. So control C, control V. And if you want to return the hour with AM or PM, you'd use uppercase I and then percentage lowercase p. So 1400 is the same thing as 2 p.m.
Okay, so copy and paste this next function, and that will return, in this case, the name of the month as a string. So we need to return that to a text field, or we could return the day name as a text field. So copy and paste this, and then we'll use it in ArcMap. We need to calculate into a text field to use this function. So I'll make this text field visible and my date field visible. So then we right mouse click on our text field and field calculator, Python parser, show codebook, and then we'll copy and paste that function. So the function is name date, that's the name of our function. So then we're going to take our date field, and that will be the input to our function. It returns the name of the month or the name of the day as a string, and it's set right now to return the month name, and then just OK. So then basically, these records, it returned the text January, and this record, it returned the text April. And we can modify our function, so if we go back to the field calculator, Let's return the name of the day instead. So I just turn a name. Oops, I needed to get rid of that space. So field calculator, and this needs to be in the same. And then OK. So basically, 5th of January was a Monday, and the 4th of April will be a Saturday. OK, we could also return the day of the year. So for example, 31 would be January 31, 32 will be February 1. So it will return the day of the year as an integer, because at the very end we use the int function to convert it to an integer. So let's copy this, and then we need an integer field to output to. So if we go to our table, let's make int field 3 visible again. And then we'll do a calculation. So control V to paste. And the name of our function is DOY for day of year. So call up that function DOY and send to that function our date field values and it will be output to integer field three, and it will return the day of years as an integer. So five for January 5th, 15 for January 15th, 23 for January 23, and 94, so there's 94 days from January 1 to April 4th. Okay, so let's make a list of dates. So I'll copy from my text file and paste it into my Python script. So this backslash is a continuation character. It has to be date time. So that creates a list. So if we look at that list, that's what's inside our list. What we could do is these would be dates of floods. And we might want to know how many years is it between the dates of floods. So, for example, we've got 2014, June 21st, 2006, July 7th, 1992, July 17th, 1967, August 21. We could loop through our list and print out each of these dates. So our list is list of floods with an S. So that's the dates that are in our list. So what we'll do is we'll make a list of differences between the two dates. So when we start, it'll be an empty list. And then we'll loop through. So from I is from one to four. So take the I flood and subtract it from the previous flood. So in this example, take 
2006 and subtract it from 2014, and then take 1992, subtract it from 2006, and then take 1967, subtract it from 1992. Okay, so let's see what's inside our list of differences. And there are objects that are called time delta objects. So we have the time between each of the two pairs of dates. So one, two, three pairs. Okay, so let's test what is the first time delta object. So the first time delta object would be difference between LST floods, our first item, and LST floods, our next item. So how many years is it between those two floods? So that would be our time delta object dot and then days. So that's how many days it is between the dates and negative means that the second date is before the first date. And then we could say alt P, well how many years is that? So divide it by 365. So it's eight years between 2006 and 2014. And we could do that for any date time object. Date time time delta object is use days to get the days in that time delta object. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got a quiz question for you that will lead you to the next video 